My mug is keeping me warm. Your mug is keeping you warm? I thought you said, it's super comfortable out. Go ahead, open up the windows, turn off the heat. We're good. You're going to love it outside today. Well, then the sun went down and it got too cold. <laughs> Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 91. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 150 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now, here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews and we talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, we sit down on a couch and talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. It's keto in the camping chair. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, wait a second. They're not on a couch. They're not at the bench. They're not in their studio. Where are they? We are in Silver Springs State Park here in Ocala, Florida. Ocala, Florida. We are currently celebrating my 50th birthday, which is actually this Sunday, but you guys will be seeing this video the day after my 50th birthday. And we live streamed yesterday or the day before you guys are seeing this video. That sounds confusing. So but. right now, are you holding on to 49 like dear life? No, I'm actually for the first time in my life that I can think about, other than maybe when I was a little child, enjoying my birthday. Like I am enjoying celebrating turning 50. I'm enjoying turning 50 and I'm enjoying the celebration of turning 50. And I've never wanted to celebrate my birthday before. I can remember when we were younger, like mm -hmm. 10 years ago, 50 seemed very bleak to you. Yeah. I, I honestly didn't think I would see 55. Um, I never had good health. My dad died at the age of 64. I had like heart issues. I had already arthritis medication. And we, at minimum, we figured by the time I was 50, I was going to be permanently in a wheelchair. Yeah. So to think now at the age of 50, and I know it's young for a lot of people, but yeah, for a long time, I never thought I would see even this age. Um, I'm healthy. I feel great. I mean, we're going camping every two weeks. We're outside. We go kayaking. We go bicycle riding. We go for long four or five mile walks. I feel great. I don't need crutches. I don't need arthritis medication. I don't need heart medication or cholesterol medication. I feel awesome. So I'm excited that I've celebrated my 50th birthday. I'm excited too, and I feel very optimistic about the future. It's given me a lot of peace as your wife, because I can remember as you were planning to just continue getting sicker, I was thinking what more is going to have to rest on my shoulders as far as taking care of you and, you know, just workload. And so it's like we, we both have a, an awesome future to look forward to now. Right. So long as I have to be the first one to go. Aww. Because there's no way I could live without you. You're so sweet. So we're gonna have to go together, because what? like I like don't want to have Juliet? to. Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, yeah. Because this way you don't have to live without me, and I don't have to live without you. But I plan on living to a hundred. How old do you plan on living to? I'm gonna be a hundred. You're gonna be a hundred and twenty. One twenty. Well, you know what? If we keep up this lifestyle, maybe we're gonna make it. Let's, Let's do pound it. that. So, Deal. I'm actually have a lot of things I'm looking forward to. Now, before we even get started, uh, Keto Chow Flavor of the Week is... We don't know. We don't know. Because we're filming this a couple of days early. We normally film on Saturdays, uh, but we're going to film it on Thursday night, which is right now, because we have a five-hour drive home tomorrow, and then we've got to play catch-up from taking six days off of work. So I just wanted to get Keto on the Couch done. Make sure we have and, it. Because we have a lot coming up. So... I don't know what the flavor is at the time we're filming it, but we are going to put it right here. Dun, 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 dun. That's that's the flavor of the week, which is 10% off. But then again, every week, every flavor is the flavor of the week when you use our link below. You get 10% off? Because you get 10% off of everything. So pick your own flavor of so the week. So pick your own flavor of the week. So, But you know what else I'm excited about? Starting... On Wednesday. Is that December 9th? December 9th. We will be celebrating the 12 days of keto Christmas. I know you wanted the 12 days of keto, but I got to add Christmas in there. But yeah. it's the 12 days of keto 
Christmas. And we're going to be having a lot of giveaways starting December 9th and running all the way to December 20th. And I think we're going to try to have it at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every single day. Yes, we're going to live stream every day at 8.30 p.m. Um, Friday should be interesting because we, uh, not this Friday, but the following Friday, uh, the 18th, we're going to be taking the boys to Universal Studios because we have a free pass and we want to do a family trip to Universal Studios. And uh, so we may be live streaming from the car. I don't know. It depends on what time the park closes and when we can get home. But we are going to live stream. And we've got a lot of cool things to give away. And yes. So just to give you a heads up of some of the sponsors, because if you're new to our channel, we did this last year and it was an awesome success. And we had some awesome companies and I'm still working on a couple more, but we have some awesome companies so far. So some of the companies that are going to be sponsoring the 12 days of keto are Perfect Keto. Mm -hmm. and their giveaway is amazing. Crazy awesome. They have told us, put together a package of whatever you want with a very high retail value. Yeah. And so we're going to put together a package of what our favorite products are, but we're going to let you choose the flavors. Yeah. So that is really awesome. We have not one, not two, but three giveaways from Keto Chow. Wow. We have Chalk Zero. We have Carrie Brown. Um, we have Nush. I mean, we have some amazing sponsors. And every day is going to feature a different sponsor. And every day we're giving away something from that company. And like I said, Keto Chow's got three things. So how are they going to enter to win this giveaway? The way you're going to enter is... You're going to leave comments on the current day's video, and then we will choose the winner the next day from the comments. But we'll get into that once we get to the you know actual live streams. But you need to make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, and most importantly, that you hit that bell button so that you're notified about the live streams because you want to be notified when we're actually live. And also, you know, there's always a chance live streaming. You know, you guys have all seen it with us. There's always that chance where internet goes down, something happens, things get funky, and you want to be able to be notified about any changes because we'll put changes not only in the Facebook family group, but also in the community tab of our channel. And if for some reason the stream goes off, if you have the notification, it'll pop right back up what the new, you know, stream link is. I'm totally bummed. Like speaking of Chalk Zero, mm -hmm. we did not bring our Chalk Zero advent calendar with us on this trip. And so we're behind. There's chocolate I could have been eating this whole time. Think about this though. There are people who are helping us out with that because somebody, I don't remember who, had an awesome little meme picture. Okay. said, according to my Chalk Zero advent calendar, yes. there's only three days left to Christmas. <laughs> Because like she's eaten all the way. <laughs> That's awesome. So people are helping us out. They're making it up for us. There you go. But I am excited when we get home to actually like catch up on all of those different things. I plan on catching up on all that chocolate. So this has been a great week. It has been super cold here for us. I mean, it's been cold for people all over the country this week. But for it's a treat. But for us, it's been very cold. I mean, because we're five hours north of where we live. So it's usually a little bit chillier up here. But it's been in the 30s while we've been camping. I feel like we've gotten the entire winter experience. Yeah, it's it's really been awesome. And it's a reminder that we don't want to live where it's cold all the time. <laughs> I will say this about this park. If you are ever in Florida, in the central Florida area, you need to come check out Silver Spring State Park, even if you're not camping. Such a piece of history. I mean, yeah, the history that's here. Make sure you go check out our Crazy Campers channel. Go subscribe to it. Help us grow to a thousand subscribers. But we're going to have a video on there kind of overviewing the whole campground and the whole park. But one of the first, like, actual theme parks here in Florida... Right? I mean, long before Disney World. We're talking the 1890s this was open. Lots of movies filmed here, including scenes from Moonraker and uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon. And awesome, awesome history here. And just the innovation yeah. that was born here where people were like, how do we share what's going on in these beautiful springs with people and not have them in the water. So like they have glass bottom boats, but the fact that they were made so early in American history, it's just amazing to me. What was your favorite part of this trip so far? The weather, 
honestly. Really? Yeah, because it felt like Christmas. It was the beginning it, it of was December. Nice. It was nice. But I'm going to tell you, we're going to give a little sneak peek to like our camping video. Like on our, we we're, we did a vlog. Did this involve an alligator? And it involved an alligator. And okay. unfortunately, we did not catch this on video. But we were on a tour on the glass bottom boats, which was really cool in itself because don't you think the water is five feet deep? And the guy's like, oh no, that's 40 feet deep. And yeah. you're like, what? I feel like I can reach down and touch the bottom. He's like, no, it's very, very deceptive because the water is so super crystal clear. So we're in this one little place and somebody goes, hey, look at that snake going across the water. And it was giant. <clears throat> it was giant. It looked like a scene out of Anaconda. I was thinking the same thing. And this snake is going across. It must have been a water moccasin. I think it was too because of the way it was swimming. And it's going across and it's going across and it's going across. And then all of a sudden you look just a little bit to the right and you see an alligator swimming full force. And I thought we were watching something from the National Geographic channel. He totally ambushed the snake and like gulped him up. You saw this big splash, which nobody got video. I was ready to pay somebody for video. I was like a news channel. Like who got video of that from our channel? You. Nobody had video. But Rachel did snap a couple of pictures of the, of splash. the splash as this alligator took out this giant snake like just left and it was it was the coolest thing i've ever seen and you don't realize until like it's too late that there's an alligator there and one of the most surprised people was a kayaker that was just inches from this happening yeah it was really cool and even the boat driver who said like in like 30 years of me doing this boat he's like i have never, never seen, seen an alligator take out something and he's like and it's kind of rare for now anyway because it's so cold Usually alligators are like kind of dormant when it gets that cold and they're not out on the look for food. And yeah, he, he took that hungry. thing out. It was, it was just awesome. Oh, you have a little coffee. I have coffee. So, but yeah, that was incredible. But overall, it has been a great trip. But you know what? Here's the thing. Keep on the couch isn't about us. Nope. It's about you guys. And we've got a bunch of comments to talk about, right? Uh -huh. So let's take a quick commercial break. Get into comments. Welcome back, and we're going to do this old school style. Old school style, because I don't have my whole computer set up. I got my iPad right here. <laughs> First thing we're going to talk about is our Keto College Adjunct Professor of the Week. And uh, this is somebody who has been posting in our Facebook group or even in the comments section of our videos and has been really working hard to inspire people. And this week is actually somebody who's fairly new to our group. Well, welcome. And it is Heather. Hey, Heather. And Heather actually, on December 1st, put up a thing and said, I'm going to challenge myself in December to alternate day fasting. That is huge. And it is a difficult thing if you don't know what alternate day fasting is, where you eat one day and then you skip the next day. Now, I'm going to say, if you're going to alternate day fast, two things. Number one, make sure you're getting all of your electrolytes yes. in on those off days. Also, on your day of eating... You're feasting. Now, it doesn't mean you eat like, you know, gorge yourself, but you're not calorie counting. So you're eating on one day. You're going to eat until you're full for your meals. And then the next day you don't eat. So don't do like a 1200 calorie day and then fast the next day. That's going to screw up your metabolism. But what I really like what Heather's doing is, again, she's brand new to our group. Mm -hmm. And she puts this up and people have joined her. And every day she's been going in there going, okay. Today's fasting day. Today's feasting day. How's everybody doing? And she's encouraging the people. And I love that because that's what our family group's all about. Thank you for doing that because that gives a lot of people a good idea for just how to spend the month of December because these holiday months can be really challenging sometimes. Right. So it's it's really awesome. Thank you very much, Heather, for being that inspiration to people. That's what we're looking for. And that's why we love everybody that's in our family group. You guys are awesome. Okay. So let's get into our subscriber of the week. Now, if you're new to our channel, every week we like to pick somebody who has had a success story. And the success story doesn't mean you're at your end of your journey. It could be somebody who's only been doing this for a couple of weeks and all of a sudden they're off a of medication. But we ask you to share your story because your story is going to inspire someone. And, you know, there's someone out there right now who's going through what you've gone through or what you're currently going through. And they think they're alone. And when they see your story, they're going to be like, oh, I'm not alone. Just 411, I will not be at the end of my journey until I stop breathing. I kind of feel the same way. I say that about sports officiating. You know, if you don't know, I'm a high school sports official for lacrosse and football. And I have always said, and I used to do baseball, and I've always said, the day I do a perfect game, 
You're done. Is the day I will never officiate again. Why? I'll never be perfect, right? Yeah. I'll never be perfect. Now, on a side note, I don't understand who people who say like officials are horrible. So like when I was an umpire, they'd say like, you were horrible. You missed five strike calls. And I'd be like, so let's say I probably called 200 pitches throughout the game and you're telling me I was off on five. That's a pretty good percentage, isn't it? Better than most batting averages. If I miss three calls in a football game, I think I'm doing pretty good. Like, you know, but... <laughs> don't be so hard on yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself. And don't be so hard on yourself now. Yeah. So anyway, this week's subscriber of the week is Holly Sampson. Hey, Holly. And Holly wrote, this is a picture of my youngest son, Brandon. He is a sweetheart. I've been on keto going into my 14th month as of tomorrow, December 1st, and I've lost 50 pounds in those months. Wow. I'm so happy with myself. I'm 70 years old, and I feel the best that I've felt in years. Here are the pics of me with my son in May, and then tonight on November 30th. Down 20 more pounds since those six months. Wow. Slow and steady. I love keto. Easy lifestyle. And I have more to go, but I see the end of the tunnel. Maybe by spring. Let's Here you see. go. What? Oh, you look amazing. She looks incredible. Honestly, your son looks like he's yes. lost some weight. I don't know if he's done with keto, but he looks amazing too. But incredible. you guys look great together, and I love your smile on your face. Yeah. So let's get into comments. Okay, so our first comment is from Peggy. Hey, Peggy. Peggy said, I love you too. Never lose the shenanigans. Oh, I'm glad that you're okay with our shenanigans because they're a plenty. So long as Rachel is around, there will always be plenty of shenanigans. But that's why I love her. This is true. <laughs> you ready for the next one? Yes. Here you go. Why don't you read that one? This one's from Pat. Hey, Pat. She says, Kentucky people love you. We are just a fun-loving kind. You sure are. Like, I love everybody from Kentucky. We've made so many friends on keto like that live in Kentucky, and I am so grateful for you guys. Yeah. Okay, next one is from JT Tiger. Hey, JT Tiger. Said, I love you guys. I love the Facebook group, but Facebook has gotten so toxic and it's not good for my mental health. Have you all thought about making a group on MeWe for the people that have left Facebook? If so, please let me know and I would join in a heartbeat. Never even heard of that. I have never heard of that and we have not made any kind of group over there. However, as of today, the, the, the viewing or the release of this video... We do have a Discord server. I'm gonna leave a link for that down below. Wow. I've created a couple of different rooms, and if you don't know what Discord is, it's basically a chat room. Yeah. So you can go in there, and you can talk to different people, and I've set up a couple of different groups for like fasting, just everyday family group, and you can kind of go in there and post, and some people may be in there live, some people may come back later on and take a look at it. It's completely free to join, and we're also going to have a separate room for our Patreon members as well. So you can kind of go in there where we'll probably spend a little bit more time, but we'll be in and out of all the rooms. But yeah, if you don't want to do Facebook or anything, but you still want to chat, obviously it's brand new, so there's nobody in there, but we plan on building it. It's just another way that we can stay in contact with you guys and you guys can all stay together as a Facebook group or Exciting. as a family group. I'm so excited. Okay, next one is from uh, Pulani. Hey, Pulani. Says, ooh, we live in Hawaii. Hope your live stream for the giveaway is a good time. You two have been such an inspiration, plus always a ray of sunshine and always bring a smile. Well, I hope that um, the 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time works. I was hoping that, too, uh, when I saw that. That's one of the reasons we made it for 8.30, because I feel like at 8.30, that gives people on the West Coast enough time to maybe get home from work, even if they're a couple minutes late. Last year, I know we did it at 5 o'clock, and... You know, that meant that people who are on the West Coast had to watch it at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and, you know, work and that kind of stuff. So, But we're not going to make it a requirement that you're there in the live stream to, to win. win. No. But you will have to contact us within, like, 48 hours because I want to make sure the companies can get everything out and everything else. So... We won't, you won't have to be in the live stream to win, but you will have to respond to us within 48 hours of us picking the winner. So check each day's video. Yeah. Okay, next one is from Tracy. Hey, Tracy. Tracy said, I was so nervous that you were going to reveal the secret flavor of keto chow. <laughs> I almost turned the video off, but I ordered one and I can't wait to see what it is. I thought for sure that like Miriam was going to pass out. Miriam, Chris actually messaged me when they watched Keto on the Couch, and I actually gave them a preview of that video because we put that little snippet in there with, uh, you know, like him accidentally live streaming on our account. And uh, so I let them preview it, and then they watched the whole thing. 
and he was like, Miriam really thought, he was like, you sold it well. She really thought you were going to release that, which I would never do that. You're a trustworthy guy, so you wouldn't do that to them. But I am excited that now we can say that the new flavor is apple, apple pie. Apple pie. Yeah. So let's get into the next comment. It's from Jennifer. Hey, Jennifer. She says, I was so sad I missed the holiday bundle. Perfect Keto got my money. <laughs> Perfect Keto got our money, too. They did get our money. And, and I know when we get home, hopefully my Perfect Keto stuff is there. Um, here's the good news. So yes, they did sell out on the holiday bundle. Two things about that. If you're interested in that mug, let Miriam know. And I will leave a link for Miriam's email down below. But she said if enough people show interest, they will order some more of those mugs. But they, you know, they have to order like a minimum amount. So she's yeah. got to have enough interest uh, to order those mugs. But. I know that a lot of people did miss out on that holiday bundle because they sold out. Yeah. And if you didn't get the holiday bundle, you know, like you're kind of out of luck with the new flavor, which by the way, that apple pie is amazing. It's really good. Warm. Yes. Like drink it warm and it is amazing. Delicious. Here's the thing though. They actually have another bundle right now. The December Chef's Bundle is what I think it's called. And they have some other flavors in there with some recipes. And you get a cool little, like, cutting board, like, for, like, you know, if you're going to put out some meat and cheeses, maybe for nice. the holidays. And the apple pie is in there. Okay. So it's available right now. I'll leave a link for it down below. And I think, I think think that may be one of the ones that we're giving away. I don't remember which bundles, but I know they said they're giving us three different things to give away during the giveaways. I think that may be one of them. All right. So, but yeah, if you're interested, if you want to get the apple pie, because the apple pie is not coming out for another couple weeks, but if you want to try it now, you got to have to get that bundle. Maybe you put it on your like Santa wish list. Yeah. I'm looking here. It looks like the battery is about to go dead. So let's take a quick commercial break so I can change out the battery and then we'll come back. My foot fell asleep for a second. I know. It was, you were doing like the Frankenstein limp over there. Okay, next one is from Joanne. Hey, Joanne. So she said, I have got to carry cash. Too many times places could not take my credit card, so cash it is. Thank you for being on your channel. All of your ideas are so helpful. Well, thanks for that. The one place that I'm always thinking to myself, I need to carry cash is the thrift store. Right. Because a lot of times I'll go into a thrift store and they have like a five or $10 minimum. And I haven't like come up with five or $10 worth of stuff. I know one of the places I always like to have some cash is in my car. And I'm glad we actually always keep quarters in the car. Like, especially cause we want to go to Aldi, but we're here camping. And the washers and dryers at this state park are a dollar. A dollar a load. So we're like, uh, let's get all of the laundry done so that when we get home, there is no laundry to wash. I should have brought some more laundry from home yeah, to I do. Know, it's right? cheaper to do it here. Next one is from Queen Shelly Hughes. Hey, Miss Queen. She said, I have always had several $20 bills tucked away in my wallet and lots of quarters in my glove box. Ooh, that is smart. But if I have it in my wallet, a lot of times I'll spend it. Yeah. I have to put it in some place like where I forget it's there. Like I actually had a secret place in my car where you're supposed to hide a key and I would just hide like a $20 bill. But what happens is, is then you remember it's there. So you spend it and then I forget to replace it. I used to have one like shoved in my wallet before I went to like the simple wallet with just the things. But yeah, I would completely forget it's there and then I won't spend it. But once I remember it's there, yeah, I'm going to spend it. I always like having coins though. So Sherry wrote. Hey Sherry. Cash is king. Dave Ramsey, Dave Ramsey principles are my financial vocabulary. I'm surprised that you don't push it because of your amazing integrity. Hope you have a great camping trip. Well, thank you. We actually both are, are big Dave Ramsey fans. All of our boys we've had go through the course mm -hmm. for Dave Ramsey because we do think it's super important to, um, you know, follow that principle of being like a good steward of right. what God's given you. And we do use credit cards, but it's only ones that we can, we pay it off every month. Yeah, we basically. believe in paying it off. Um, we believe in like if you have something like a very very low interest rate, like you know, like on my truck, like a one or two percent interest rate where you're not paying much. We may use that because then you can keep the cash like available in case you have an emergency, like we needed a new air conditioner in our bedroom. However, what we believe in doing is when you do have something like that, keep that money aside 
put away in an area so that at any given moment, at the snap of a finger, you, pay it you can pay it off. But it allows us to have some cash in reserve and let our money work for us, but also not spend it unless it's an absolute like emergency. So we've always done that and just allow it to build and build and build. But we, yeah, we don't believe in debt. Like we don't really have any kind of credit card debt. We don't even have a mortgage. No, because I don't want to have to live under that burden. So next one is from Steph. Hey, Stephanie. She says, we very seldom ever carry cash unless we're going to garage sales, buying eggs from our egg lady, or going to the thrift store as they only do cash at the one we love to visit. Christopher inspired me for a Christmas ornament that I would never have thought of that was genius. Yeah, Christopher got us an ornament that was crutches. Yeah, now if you haven't seen that, I'll leave a link for that. Uh, right up over Rachel's head. But what we're doing is is we're asking you guys send in any ornaments that remind you of Victory. Victory. And uh, we're going to put them on our tree. And then the tree is already decorated. The kids did it last week. And they put up all of the ornaments that were sent to us last year during the 12 days of keto. And so as we get new ones in, we'll kind of present them on the channel and hang them up on our tree. And again, our tree is only decorated with subscriber ornaments. So I'm super excited about that. Me too. Okay. Next one is from Leah. Hey, Leah. She said, your comments on washing plastic cutlery made me laugh. <laughs> My nanny used to say we were using her fine china, meaning paper plates and plastic cutlery. She was so upset when my ex-husband would throw away plastic forks because she always washed them and reused them. You know what was the hardest thing about letting go of margarine? What? Tupperware. Margarine always came in those big like country crock containers and that was Tupperware for my family. Like we always put leftovers in those things. Yeah, we've really worked hard to get rid of them as like our like different, even our lock and locks, which I've loved lock and locks. But as they kind of get those changes in colors and that kind of stuff, I've just been tossing and we're switching more and more to glass just because we don't want all the phytoestrogens and we've stuff. We've come but a long way. We've really come a long way. Uh, so the next one is from Michelle. Hey, Michelle. Uh, Michelle said, years ago, I created out of an old plastic pretzel container from Aldi a blessings jar. Aww. And everyone takes whatever leftover coins they have and throws them in a bucket on top of the refrigerator. It's been great as the boys used to throw their change away or I would find gobs of it in their rooms. The jar is used for anyone who needs a blessing, friend or family. What? No questions asked. I love that. That is awesome. What a great idea. That is really awesome. Yeah. And that might be something that you kind of like add to, you know, what we were doing by the month where every single day, if you stay on plan, you add some money to it, add it, give yourself a dollar, mm -hmm. but yeah, make it a gift type of thing. So as you are successful, you're also blessing others. Yeah. Okay, next one's from our Facebook group. And it's from Miranda. Hey, Miranda. You want to read that one? She says, does anybody recommend a good keto cookbook? I don't like to use very much special ingredients like collagen, protein powders, almond flours, etc. I like simple, basic recipes with meats, veggie, fats, and spices most of the time. Okay, so I'm going to recommend a few different books to you. Uh, number one. Uh, there's going to be some almond flour, but it's a very well-rounded book. Uh -huh. It's Keto Connects, uh, Keto Made Easy book. That's the first keto cookbook we ever bought. And we're yes. not huge cookbook people because there's so much stuff available online. I love uh, that They one. do use things like almond flour and hemp hearts and things like that. But it is a great book. Uh, Carrie Brown has yes. several good books. And hers use pretty simple, basic ingredients. And the soup one is amazing. The ice cream one is incredible. Freaking amazing. <laughs> and then if you're really looking for simple, mm -hmm. and uh, head over and take a look at um, Keto Ginger's book. Yes. Because she likes to use very simple ingredients, stuff that you can buy in a grocery store, nothing like that you have to go on Amazon and order that kind of stuff. It's called Fat Kid, Fat Kid Keto. Oh, it's so good. So, yeah, go ahead and check out her book. So next one is from Wendy. Hey, Wendy. Wendy said, had some cabbage threatening to go bad, so I had to use it. Some bacon grease, onion, a little carrot for color, apple cider vinegar, mm. and a little chicken broth for the steam. Wow. Yum. Apologies to my coworkers tonight for the songs my colon may be singing later. Oh, man. I love cabbage cooked like that. Yes. And I loved, of course, related Brussels sprouts with Rachel's mom actually made us Brussels sprouts for Thanksgiving. Same thing. Like she didn't use all of those things, but on the Blackstone, Brussels sprouts, some bacon, some bacon grease, 
It was amazing. We didn't make any new friends. No. Because, but yeah. But it tastes amazing. It's a little bit gassy, but yeah. What is your favorite vegetable? I know some people are going to say nothing, but um, I, you know who I'm Heath. talking about. <laughs> but I'm curious. What is everybody's favorite keto-friendly vegetable? Is it broccoli? Is it cauliflower? Is it cabbage? Asparagus? Like, I'm mine is Brussels sprouts and... Also asparagus. And how do you cook it? How do you prepare it? Yeah. Next one is from Brenda. Hey, Brenda. She says, how does adding a tiny bit of gelatin in keto chow help your tummy? And what's your fav favorite way to make keto chow? Okay. So it just helps settle your stomach. But what I really like about adding gelatin is it boosts up your protein. Most of us don't consume enough protein. Even Chris, like, so Chris, even when he was just doing his recent experiments, started adding gelatin to it. The other reason I like gelatin in there is it makes it much thicker. So now you can put like a teaspoon in and just make it super, super thick. Because we always make it with butter. Yeah. And when you make it with butter, it's not quite as thick as it with you're drinking it with heavy cream. Uh -huh. So when you add that gelatin, it makes it a little bit thicker that way. If you add like two or three teaspoons into it, you can make it almost into like a pudding. Yeah. So it just makes it go a lot longer. But most importantly, you're getting a lot more protein, which is why we like it. And we always like butter. Yeah. Butter. Butter is better. If you're curious... The difference between butter and heavy cream. We mostly do butter because too much heavy cream tends to mess with our stomach and cause bloat. Yes. Um, also, it's higher in carbs. So we actually, I just answered this for somebody the other day. There is carbs in all heavy cream. If you pick up that container and it says zero carbs, that's not true. All heavy cream has carbs. It's just less than a half a carb per tablespoon. So technically they're allowed to put zero. But if you do four ounces of heavy cream, you're looking at almost four carbs in it. It's like three and a half carbs. So just be aware of that. So that's why we tend to not use heavy cream. But also heavy cream mutes the flavor of keto chow. Yeah, that's surprising. You would think that it would taste better with heavy whipping cream, but nope. honestly, try it with butter. If, if you, you want haven't. it thicker, use heavy cream. If you want it more flavorful, use melted butter. The butter is going to just bring out those flavors more. Butter's better. Uh, next one is from Heather. Hey, Heather. Heather said, new to the group, and I have a keto chow ice cream question. I've searched the group, but I didn't see a question like this. I want to make ice cream, but I don't plan on eating the whole thing in one sitting. Can I make a batch and divide it into containers? If so, how well does it keep? Uh, like, should I eat it within a week? Thanks. Okay, well, normally keto chai, you could eat. It's about a week. I, I've, I've gone as far as 10 days. With keto chow ice cream, you have to remember this. It's mostly water. Right. So when you make it, it's going to be very icy. If you just try to like mix it all and stick it in a freezer, it's going to be like ice. Ice milk. It's so, it's not really going to hold up well putting it in the freezer. Unless you start adding like some vegetable glycerin or something like that, that will help it not get that complete total freeze. Honestly, keto chow is, is meant to be a meal replacement, not a dessert. Yeah. We choose to make keto chow ice cream. That is our meal. But the ice cream allows you to slow down. And also, it kind of doubles in size because you're adding ice. So you get a lot more. Yeah. Rachel's actually had three keto chow ice creams in a sitting. I omatted it. In a bathtub. Yeah. Because <laughs> you have to. It's too cold. Next one is from Roxana. Hey, Roxana. She says, you guys here are awesome. So in a Canadian keto group, some are defending Costco processed popcorn for its low-carb content. Three grams per one cup serving. So delicious. They love it. Yada, yada, yada. I said, it's not keto. Keto is not just about fitting macros. It's high glycemic index. I didn't even ask for ingredients. Probably soaked in canola oil. Yuck. They say keto is just about saying, staying in ketosis. What's y'all's best reply? Okay, so this is a difficult one. And this, this gets into clean keto, dirty keto, which we don't like to use that word because you're labeling yourself. Yep. Um, you know, easy keto. You know, it gets into that. So let's talk about what is keto. So ketosis is when your body is using ketones for energy. Right. So if you want to get technical, so long as you are keeping your carbohydrates and your glucose intake low enough to continue to produce ketones and have your body using them for energy, you're technically 
keto. Yeah. However, as you said, keto is also about inflammation. And that's one of the things that you do. It's high glycemic. When you talk about glycemic index, the glycemic index, the higher a food is in the glycemic index, the more insulin reaction you're going to have and the more of a chance you're going to have like some glucose spikes, which is going to knock you out of keto. So technically, like if it's three carbs and you can do everything else, it's technically keto. We choose to not do keto that way. I'm more with you on the canola oil. And yes, using canola oil or using those bad mayonnaises, that has nothing to do with keto. That has just to do with health. That's for everybody. And yeah, and if you eat this kind of food, which again, I, I want to ask why. Right. Why are you eating this? Like what are you missing in your diet that you want to eat this? But once you do, and if you make this a part of your regular eating, with all that canola oil and the wonky ingredients, like you're going to feel not great. Yeah, I have not seen this popcorn. I'm curious how they're getting popcorn to be lower in carbs. Like I'd have to see the ingredients. Like are they doing some kind of science experiment with it? I don't know. But yeah, when it comes down to the oils, it's not a keto thing. It's a health thing. It's an and everybody I thing. I tell everybody, I don't care what diet you're on, whether you're on a Mediterranean diet, whether you're on a standard American diet, dump all of those oils. Get rid of the, the regular mayonnaises. Get rid of the canola oils, the vegetable oils, the corn oils. They're bad for you. And those are the things that are causing all of the problems in people's diets. Like when the, all the heart problems, that's what it's coming from. They switched over to canola oil because they were worried about saturated fat, but they didn't look at the whole picture. And so, yeah, get everybody in your life off of those oils, regardless of what their diet lifestyle is. So we have one more. It's from Shauna. Hey, Shauna. Shauna said, how do you stop snacking? The last few days have been very trying. At least it's all keto. It's, it's a tough one. It's something that we constantly are challenged by ourselves. A lot of times, um, it's all about just switching out how you deal with stress because yeah. that's usually what leads me to snacking. It's what else is going on in my life. It's not just a case of I want to sit down and eat this bag of like moon cheese. Right. It just happens to me because I'm not prepared for the stress of my day. Yeah. Snacking is definitely something that I struggle with more than Rachel. Um, Rachel will struggle with like, hey, I just want a giant volume. I struggle with, I want to eat a little bit because I can't eat a lot in a sitting. Yeah. And also I eat when I'm bored. And so I have a lot of times like the number one place for me to usually would want a snack is in the car. I spend a lot of time in the car because I own a landscape business, because I'm always driving. Like when I'm going to a game, some of my games are over an hour away. I want something to do. So it would always be snacking and it became a habit. Now I've really worked hard to transfer it over to just drinking, always having a drink with me. Um, and that kind of goes to Dr. Cybus's thing of having a bridge. When you want to snack, have something else to do instead. I noticed somebody in the comments put gum. We don't do gum because there are carbohydrates in gum. And also both of us could chew like three packs of gum in a day. And that would not be very good. During times of the day right now where, you know, I want to snack and reach for something, I find myself using my crochet loom mm -hmm. and I just sit down and start working on a hat because it's giving me something to do. Like you're right. saying, just give me something to do. I'll make myself another cup of coffee. I'll do my crochet loom. I'll go read a book. But basically, it all boils down to I've got a stressful moment and I want to take myself out of it. Just go do something you enjoy, even if it is go take a bath, go for a walk, go for a bike ride, go look at something pretty, and just sort of take your mind off of the stress. Yeah. Like I said, Dr. Cyrus calls it a bridge. So it could be a cup of coffee. It could be a diet soda. And I know there's people who say, don't drink diet soda. Anything that's zero calorie. If if you can't do Zevia or if you can't do plain water, I wouldn't I honestly would say don't make it water because use water as something that's gonna quench your thirst, but you're looking for a bridge to get you away from snacking. So cup of coffee, maybe just like 
a cup of water, hot water with the Redmond season salt in it. Oh yeah. A Diet Coke. If you if you're if you don't have a problem with gum like we do, have a piece of gum. Some kind of zero calorie thing. It could be an activity, like Rachel said, picking up her crochet thing, go for a walk. Just anything to distract you off of that snacking, and that should help you get through. And I know this is something I struggle with. So I'll find myself working and I'm just like, let me get up and take a walk or go outside or think of something else to do for a minute to get my mind off of the snack. It's a hard thing, but you can do it if you just put your mind to it. Yeah. Well, that's going to be this week's Keto on the Couch. Next week, we'll be back to our normal location at a bench in front of a Christmas tray. And you will be totally 50. I will be 50. You know what else we may have? What? At that point, we may be at 1 million views because wow. we're a 6,000 away right now. I cannot believe that. I can't believe it either. But if you like seeing episodes like this, Linked right down there are 90 more Keto on the Couches. Wow. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which you're going to find right over here. Whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel. Click the little bell icon. That way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. Bye.